Hello everyone. Welcome to your own channel Food Tech Network. My name is Anush Sharma. In this lecture, we'll discuss about the processing of fruits and two very important commercially available products obtained by fruit processing, which are jam and jelly. So let us begin. Before uh, discussing the proper production of jam and jelly, you must know what are high sugar products. So mostly fruits can be made into various high sugar products depending on their type, variety and product features etc. Jam, jelly, marmalade, candy and glazed and crystallized fruits are few products made out of fruits which are very high in sugar content. The stability of high sugar products is attributed to the following reasons that is the low water activity they generally have a water activity level of less than 0.85 and we know that most microorganisms especially bacteria need a water activity more than 0.9 also the high sugar content exerts an osmotic pressure which kills the microbial cells along with that low enzymatic activity of fruits help in ensuring an extended shelf life of the products obtained why do we need hsps like we already know that sugar is not good for our health so why is it like that most fruit based products which you see in the market are loaded with sugars so the thing is that fruits and vegetables cover a wide range of produce that vary considerably in their post harvest behavior most of them are perishable unless they are some sort of fruits and tuber crops the most common causes of loss includes mechanical injury because they are very soft and settle in uh, their structure injury from temperature effects and pests and diseases are also very common microbial infestations like rotting by fungus and bacterial pathogens is often indicative of physical damage or physiological deterioration the soft texture and high moisture content of fruits and vegetables render them susceptible to mechanical injury which can occur at any stage from the field to market and not during storage alone injury may arise because of poor harvesting practices the use of unsuitable containers to transport the crop from field to the market improper packaging over or underpacking of containers careless handling of the produce or the containers in which they are packed hence it becomes important to convert them into stable products which are not only uh, stable in terms of uh, deterioration from microbes but are also structurally uh, stable so that they are not uh, so easily rendered useless or damaged by physical injuries or pressure or temperature etc we also need to take care of the fact that there takes place minimum loss of nutrients taste flavor and other compounds so now coming to the jam jam is one of the most widely consumed product obtained from fruits technically it is a product made by boiling fruit pulp with enough sugar so that a reasonably thick consistency is attained it should be firm enough to hold the fruit tissues in position apple supporter that is chiku papaya plums mango grapes check pineapple banana guava and pears are commonly used for preparation of jam one thing which we need to keep in our mind is that jams are made with fruits containing high pectin it can be prepared from one kind of fruit or even multiple fruits can be combined together in the preparation about 45% of fruit pulp should be used for every 55% of sugar now let us discuss about the jam processing so the first step is selection and preparation of fruit so we need to uh, select good quality ripe fruits fruit should not even be overripe and they should not even be underripe underripe fruits will not be uh, at the physiological state to be furnished into jam and overripe fruits are too soft and sometimes they are uh, susceptible to rotting or microbial deterioration even before processing So once we are done with the selection of fruits we need to wash the fruits well in cold water we need to peel the fruits and remove the stones corers seeds and un uh, and other inedible parts now we cut the peeled fruits into small pieces with a stainless steel knife 
now either these small pieces can be used for instance in case of very uh, you know soft roots like berries we directly crush them into a uh, semi furnished paste kind of structure but if the fruit is solid enough firm enough like apple papaya or uh, like other fruits which are solid in structure we need to turn them into pulp so the next step is addition of sugar and acid so we'll take the desired quantity of sugar and acid and we'll mix you know cook all uh, these components the mixture so form slowly with occasional stirring the fruit pulp should be crushed with a ladle during cooking and it should be continuously stirred so that there are no chances of sticking continuous cooking till the temperature of the mass reaches 105.5 or 104 to 105 degrees celsius uh, is attained so this temperature is very much needed for proper production of jam now let us see what are different tests to see whether our jam is made well or not the first one is the sheet or flake test a small portion of jam is taken out during boiling in a spoon or wooden ladle and cooled slightly it is then allowed to drop if the product falls in the form of sheet or flakes instead of flowing in a continuous stream or in the form of a slurry if it forms if it falls in the form of discontinuous sheet or solid structures then it is suggested to be completely done if it still has a syrupy slurry based consistency we need to cook it more and as i said if the sheet tell uh, sheet test is not done it if it is not taken positive we need to cook it even more now once it is done we need to package and uh, the jam and by for doing that we hot fill it in a clean and sterilized jar and now after filling we cap it and let it cool for some time now when we talk about the end point detection of jam the one of the test was temperature that we need to make it attain 104 and 0.5 degrees celsius around temperature and we also can use the sheet test the other important parameter is the refractometer testing so jam should have a tss or total soluble solid of 68.5 degree bricks this means in every 100 gram of jam 68.5 gram are to be solids are to be soluble solids so you can see the structure of refractometer different types of refractometers are available in the market and any and a suitable range like as you can see this uh, the range for jam reaches more than 60 so you need to use up to like from 0 to 100 range of refractometer now we'll talk about the production of jelly so a jelly is a semi solid product prepared by boiling a clear strained solution of pectin containing fruit extract free from pulp after the addition of sugar and acid so the basic difference between jam and jelly is that jam is made from pulp but uh, whereas the jelly is made from the strained pulp like it is made from juice clear liquid a perfect jelly should be transparent it should set well but not be stiff that it should not be too tough and it should have the original flavor of the fruit it should be of attractive color and keep its shape when removed from the mold it should be firm enough to retain a sharp edge but tender enough when it is cut or pressed it should not be gummy sticky or syrupy or and even should not have crystallized sugar the product should be free from dullness with little or no synthesis now synthesis is the oozing out of water from uh, the so called gel formed but it should not ooze out water it should not be tough nor rubbery the fpo or the fruit product order or now we can say the fssi mandates that the final product of jam should have 65 degree bricks or 65% solids 45% fruit extract and 0.5 to 0.75% acid now for one let us discuss the flow charts for both of these products jam as well as jelly so in this a very common flow chart you can see the first step is picking up ripe fruits inspection washing peeling and cutting blending simmering stirring addition of sugar we already know that around 55% sugar is used rapid boiling concentration plus slime or any acid then jam product testing by three test temperature 104.5 degrees celsius 
TSS 68.5 degree Celsius uh, degree breaks and the third one is the sheet test then we need to hot fill it in the sterilized container and let it cool for some time let us see the flow chart for processing of jelly here I have taken the flow chart of dragon fruit jelly processing so the first step is selection of ripe fully matured dragon fruits washing them peeling and cutting into slices then we add water like the same ratio if we are taking 100 kg of dragon fruit slices 100 kg of water is to be taken we boil them together for 20 to 30 minutes then we strain the extract with muslin cloth so that the pulp and fib fibrous part is you know expelled and only the clear liquid juice is taken in now the extract is boiled with continuous stirring we add sugar the addition of pectin is also done in case the uh, fruit lacks pectin we need to add pectin but in most cases when we prepare jam we take we already take pectin rich fruits right so the tss has to be checked continuously right so if you see here three stages are given how tss changes from 55 to 67 degree breaks then we add citric acid because acidity as i said is very much needed then kms or potassium metasulfite is also added as a preservative then we remove the scum we hot fill into pet bottles and then we seal and cool it and then we store it so this was about the processing of jelly dragon fruit jelly thank you so much this, it's all about today's lecture we discussed about jam and jelly processing uh, individual steps the control of quality and point detection and we also looked at the flow chart so in the next lecture we'll continue with other products based out of fruits thank you